So hi, Mike Rope Hunter here, and today I would like uh, to answer another one of my viewer of my viewers' questions. It's a slightly technical question, and it uh, relates uh, to the exchanging of objectives uh, on microscopes. And because the question might be a little bit difficult to understand, is uh, please bear with me. Uh, later on, I would like uh, to explain it first before I actually um, also answer the question. But I'm going to read it out first. Okay, so here we go. I want to buy a new set of objectives for one of my microscopes to replace the Japanese ones which, with, with a conjugate distance of 185 millimeters with a DIN 45 ones which have a conjugate distance of 195 millimeters. Is it really worth buying the plan achromatics? And in any case, the numbers written on the barrel, are they sufficient to understand the quality or are there other things to take into consideration? In other words, if the numbers written are the same, is the quality also the same? Thanks in advance. Yes, because this is a slightly technical question, I need to explain a little bit the basics here, what the my viewer who was asking the question was actually referring to. Um, you have to look over here. I've brought uh, two objectives along here. Uh, both of them, in this case, are 40 times magnifying objectives. And you can see that actually um, one of them is uh, significantly shorter than the other one. Okay. Um, and... Uh, the shorter one here, this one is uh, the one with a conjugate distance of 185 millimeter. And this one, the longer one, has a conjugate distance of 195 millimeter. So what this is actually referred to the 185 and the 195. If you look, uh, for example, here at this microscope that I have over here, it's an Olympus CHA microscope from the 19. 80s actually um, this microscope here has a conjugate distance of 185 millimeters and this means that the distance from the stage all the way to the place up here where the image is projective is projected is 185 millimeters and the other Olympus microscope that I have over here has 195 millimeters so it's a slightly little bit larger and the distance from the stage to the place where the image is made is 195 millimeters. What does this mean? This means that the distance from the stage to the place where the objective is mounted you know, at the revolving nose piece is 35 millimeters here and over here it is 45 millimeters. So the distance between stage and um, the place where the objective is mounted is smaller here. This is also why the, the objective can be smaller because the distance to the stage is, is, is shorter. Some people call them short barrel objectives. And this one is a, is a, is a long barrel one, a normal one. Okay. These days, uh, the most common standard is, is uh, the one um, with uh, the 195 millimeters. Um, the 185 you will still find in some older microscopes and nowadays also in modern introductory microscopes. They also have uh, the smaller uh, size. Yeah, and so if you want to exchange the objectives now, there's a problem or there might be a problem. Even though the you can exchange it physically, the threading is the same, you have to be careful that there is indeed enough space between the stage and the revolving nose piece. Um, if you, so this means you have to be able to lower the stage sufficiently that the large objective also still has space okay I mean if you're not able to lower the stage all the way then you're not able to mount uh, the objective okay um, so this is the first thing that I would definitely check there is also another thing that you have to take a little bit into consideration that is, is that this is not the only difference but the Japanese standard also has a so-called a different uh, tube length of so-called 170 millimeters. I know all of those numbers are getting a little confusing. So it is possible uh, to also adjust this by sometimes rotating the eyepiece out uh, so that you can and in so that uh, you're able to now also mount uh, the full size, not the full size, the, the, the more common standard. And then you have to also make adjustment to the distance. The reason being that also those two are not only different uh, in length, but also at the place where they create the image. Yeah? So in short, um, it is possible. It might not always be the best idea. You have to try it out. It is experimental. Okay. So this is basically now concerning the, the, the size issues and concerning the, the mechanical issues here. Okay. So check that you're indeed able to physically mount a larger objective in your microscope. So this was essentially the, the, the first thing. I know it's a little bit unfortunate that uh, they are now, we are with all of those standards that are around, it's, it's not um, always quite easy to get an overview. And the second question is, is now the following, there are a whole bunch of numbers printed on the objective here. 
of course the magnification and uh, then there's usually 0.17 written on it this refers uh, to the thickness of the cover glass there's no big change here or difference here and then there is also a so-called numerical aperture which is a decimal value in this case 0.65 over here and also 0.65 over here on the other one yeah both of them have the same numerical aperture um, this numerical aperture refers to um, yeah, it is a measure of, of how much the objective is able to resolve. Okay, and the higher the numerical aperture, the finer the details that can be resolved. So the question is, is, is this now enough to actually determine whether one objective has a higher quality um, than the other one? And here this is getting a little bit difficult to answer because what do you mean with quality? Um, is resolution the thing that you refer to? Uh, but there are also other parameters, uh, as you already mentioned in your question, for example, plan objectives and so on. So you see, um, there are other factors that also play a role um, besides numerical apertures. So in other words, the short answer is it's just because the numbers are the same. This does not really tell you very much about whether a certain or a particular objective is suitable for your own needs or whether it fulfills your expectations. Um, that's a little bit uh, the unfortunate thing here. Now to your part of the question, it refers to the, whether plan achromatic objectives are worth it. And I need to first explain what they are. Um, those relatively low cost objectives that you have here um, are uh, achromatic objectives. That means they're color corrected um, to reduce the color fringes, but not very much. Um, and but they have a problem is uh, sometimes that uh, those objectives are a little bit blurry on the side when you look through the eyepiece the central part is in focus but then the sides are a little bit blurry and uh, this generally when you look through the microscope is really not a big problem because the things that you want to look at you anyway you move always to the center and you look at it at the center and then it's nice and in focus and crisp and also the way that the human eye works uh, when you look at an object usually only the central part that you look at it or the actual part that you look at is, is actually really crisp because the eye actually also makes the periphery blurry so for visual observation it really does not make such a huge difference whether you use plan uh, objectives or not however if you do photography work this might be kind of important um, the reason is, is that uh, when you look um, at a picture, then you've got a static image and you're not able to recenter the image. And then if you look at the corner of the picture, it might be blurry, okay, because the objective was blurry. So I would say that the, the choice of whether you want to buy plan objectives or not, I would say one of the main criteria is, is, is if you want to do photography. Um, if you do not have plan objectives, if you just have regular um, objectives um, then um, you can also kind of work around the problem by not taking the a picture of the full field of view of the corners but only of a central part which uh, then you don't uh, it's kind of you crop away the the blurry part on the side so you see um, there's kind of a walk around here as well um, so the question is is it worth it it depends unfortunately or fortunately as you see it um, on your expectations and how you actually intend to use uh, the uh, the microscope and don't forget that uh, plan objectives can be quite expensive uh, and therefore uh, the the price of individual objectives sometimes can even surpass uh, the cost of the rest of the microscope course it depends which type of microscope you have but also take this into consideration and uh, if uh, the price is too high you might just simply save the money together um, and uh, buy yourself a better or larger microscope later on and simply not upgrade it so this is also something that I would uh, take into consideration if you exchange your microscope objectives however then I do recommend that you exchange all of them at the same time the reason is, is if you only have, if you have over here a, a microscope objective of a different series, um, then the, when you change the magnification um, and you rotate the different objective into position, it might not be par focal. That means um, you have to refocus it, and especially for the high magnification objectives, this can be quite annoying. Um, so my recommendation is, is if you change the objectives change all of them unless you have good practice in, in using the microscopes. So this uh, refers to now the plan achromatic objectives. However, there's yeah, exactly a last point that is still also remind, uh, came into my mind. This is there are some disadvantages as well. Yeah, so let's talk about those plan objectives do have disadvantages as well. And one disadvantage is, is that even though the image quality is better, the working distance, the distance to the slide is actually lower. 
Um, so the specimen has to be quite thin, otherwise you risk kind of crashing the objective into the slide. And then there is also a second problem um, that I heard about. Uh, I was not really so much, uh, I, I personally did not have a problem with that so much yet. Um, but uh, the front lens is uh, of a planned objective is concave. Uh, let, let me use my hand, it's kind of it bends inwards. Yeah? And uh, this means if there's dirt in here, it can be difficult to clean. Now I talked uh, to some uh, um, experts uh, about microscopes and uh, concerning the cleaning of, of those objectives. And I was told the following. Um, if you want to clean those objectives with a concave front lens, what you have to do is you have to take some, of course, some, some cleaning uh, tissue paper and you actually have to maybe uh, put it around your, your little finger and actually sc uh, scrape out the inside part of the objective so they're kind of difficult to clean <laughs> okay uh, don't use hard objects but they said you have sometimes have to go in with your fingernail a little bit to get the dirt out and that sometimes people are a little bit afraid of doing that um, but I was also told that uh, the lenses of the objectives actually are more yeah are, are stronger than you might guess okay so he told me don't be afraid of actually going into the lens and kind of carefully cleaning out uh, the inside um, if they get dirty yeah, which they shouldn't, but I mean, this can happen. Uh, so they're difficult to clean um, as well. So you see, um, yeah, everything's a trade-off, okay? Everything's a trade-off and, and um, it depends a little bit on, on how you use, uh, how you intend to use the microscope. So as you see, there are a whole bunch of different uh, different aspects here. So uh, let me quickly summarize uh, the ideas uh, so that I didn't forget anything. If you want to uh, exchange objectives, uh, first of all, make sure that the large objective also is able to fit in here. Uh, that's important, um, although that you don't uh, crash into the st uh, stage. Um, number two, um, you might uh, have to uh, do some adjustment uh, concerning the the mechanical tube length to 170 millimeter if you're using the Japanese standard. Um, if this doesn't work, you have to ma maybe have to refocus a little bit. I read that this is not such a big problem generally. Um, another thing that's important is uh, is also that uh, you also exchange all of the um, microscope objectives uh, and uh, yeah of the same series. Um, that is important if you don't want to use par focality. And yeah, last but not least, is it worth it? This depends on how you want to use it. And if you use it mostly visually, then I would say maybe not so important. Um, if you want to use it uh, mostly for photography, then probably yes, especially if you want to take uh, images that have a wide field of view. Yeah, and if your eyepiece has a narrow, a small uh, field number, a very small, where you see it just a small circle, you might not even notice the fact that uh, you're actually losing the bur blurry side. Yeah, so so a whole bunch of different. <laughs> different parameters that are kind of interplaying here a little bit with each other well i don't know i don't know if this was a little bit um, not too much information right now and i hope it was kind of clear to you um, in any case yeah do leave your comments uh, and uh, yeah happy micro hunting as always and see you around next time bye bye